I welcome you to this edition of Mentoring Masterclass. And guess what? This is one of the most important editions we're going to have because it's a lecture on deliverance. So many of you have had that word deliverance. You've gone to churches to do it. So many people ask questions about it that, look, what is it? Do I need it? Because you are passing through one problem or the other. Today, I have a specialist on that topic. A man who understands the innards of the workings of the devil. The Lord has explained and shown him what the devil is and all the manipulations of the evil ones. And God has also revealed to him how to defeat all these manipulations. Today, I have with me Reverend Bolu Akinele. Reverend Bolu Akinele has been in the ministry for quite a long time and the Lord has used him around the world, more especially here in Nigeria, on deliverance. Today, you will understand what deliverance is, how you can be delivered from your problems, how you can be delivered from challenges facing you, and perhaps your children that so many of you have challenges with. Reverend Bolu Akinele, native of Ondo town in Ondo state, is the general overseer of, of the infinite the power, infinite power of, of his, his resurrection, resurrection ministry. ministry in mile 12, Lagos, Nigeria. Reverend, I welcome you to this wonderful lecture. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. God bless you. The Lord bless you, sir. Amen. Perhaps I need to come for deliverance, too. <laughs> <laughs> Reverend, if I ask you, what is deliverance? Um, deliverance, biblically, is just freedom from bondages. Mm. Yes, in a very short form. Bondages are multifarious. Mm. There is spiritual bondage, there is uh, physical ones, there is psychological, marital, moral, all, in all areas of human life there are bondages. Mm. So in order to be free from all these, all of them are put under deliverance. Deliverance. Yes. I, that, let me read a question someone sent to me. He said, in this part of the world, there is a pervasive fear of demons, evil power, witches, wizards everywhere. While some educated men feel these are figments of imagination, are there witches? Is the idea of maybe witches, wizards, is it real? What proofs have you that there are witches or there are wizards? Uh, Two questions. Thank you, sir. Mm. I, I thank God I grew up in a, in a traditional setting. Uh, after which I gave my life to Christ. You know, people that grew up in the cities may not have the experience of what we that grew up in the mm. villages have. Mm. You know, if you want to know where there are wishes, you want to go to where there are wishes, you go to the villages where there is. Wishes are normally uh, known with poverty. Anywhere there, are, there is poverty, you see manifestations of wishes there. Mm. So uh, there are wishes. There are forces of darkness. I could remember one story to, uh, my mother told me. My mother was born in 1919. 1919. 1919. So she said when she was young. Is she still alive? No, no. Oh, she's, she's gone she's to be gone. Gone. Okay. She died as a Christian? She died as a Christian. Oh, wow. Wow. So she said when she was young, around 14, 15, uh, evil spirits will manifest. Because as at that time, nobody was calling the name of Jesus. Mm. So everybody was dedicated to evil spirits. They were all under idolatry. Traditional worship. Traditional worship. So in the afternoon, the demons will manifest and they will be shouting, Baba, -o, Baba, -o, Baba. -o. So some will pour water, some will pour um, fruits, some will pour uh, palm oil just to wash it. So the thing will disappear, it will come up again. So, but because of the mentioning of the name of Jesus, because the uh, people of God are praying. It is reducing the power and the manifestation mm. of these forces of darkness. 
Hardly can you see a church now, at least in the southern part of Nigeria, where there is no single church. Mm -hmm. Hardly can you find. So, uh, mentioning the name of Jesus is reducing and is pushing them on the way from manifesting openly. Openly. So, there are wishes. Mm -hmm. There are forces of darkness. And I want to tell you, uh, among Christians, most Christians uh, fear wishes. Wishes are just messengers in the kingdom of darkness. Uh, let me say this. Some pastors, when maybe they are praying in the church and they are leading prayers, they'll pray against wishes, wizard, familiar spirits, and all this. so they'll just stop there. Mm. Uh, they think that they have conquered. You want to, you want to conquer uh, a, a, a factory. You conquer the messengers, the great men. Mm. And you are proving that you have conquered the, you conquer the, the, the mm. industry. No, no. We still have the accountants, the, the director generals, the personnel managers, and all those people. They are still there. You have not conquered. So these wishes, wizards, are just messengers in the kingdom of darkness. Of darkness. So, you mentioned something much earlier that uh, you grew up in a traditional setting. Yeah. Tell me about your, your background and how you grew up. And tell me how, I mean, someone from that kind of background became a deliverance minister <laughs> today. Let's go back to the background. Yes. I grew up under idolatrous uh, parents. My father was worshipping about eight idols. My father didn't enter church once up to the time he died. He, so he died as, as, a, as a traditionalist. Uh, early in the morning, we would be given kola notes. You worship this, you worship that. So that's the... But uh, there was... Uh, when I was uh, 12... I, I started consulting Ifa Oraku. I know how to consult Ifa Oraku. But there was a problem. I, there was a sickness that developed in me. Uh, we did all we could do. There was no solution. And that was what pushed me to Jesus. So I sat down in front of my father's house one day, and I saw this group of people uh, preaching. So I went to listen to what they were saying, and that was how... I gave my life to Christ. At uh, age 12? At age 17. 17? Age 17. Yeah, so, um, I, idolatry, witchcraft, going into uh, uh, worshipping these demons, these forces of darkness, is real. They manifest. They manifest to those who are true worshippers. Mm. The same way, when a Christian really fears God, he worship God, he runs away from sin, God will be manifesting to him, God will be talking to him. He will relate with God in a more cordial way than just an ordinary Christian. Mm. As the same way, when you really go into idolatry, the demons will manifest. What were, the, what were the things you saw when you were young that has assisted you today as a deliverance minister? So many. You know, when cancer Lee come, when they tell me the, what they are passing through, I quickly remember my background, what might have led to that. For example, uh, there is this couple that came just this last week. They had married for, uh, for about 14 years now, no issue. And every day, the woman would be sick, every day. So, uh, we, she, she had gone to so many places mm. to pray. She has uh, consulted so many prophets. So I could remember then that there are some traditions that will hinder women from conceiving. So I ask, did you practice uh, adultery? And that was the end. Mm. She broke down and the man was there. So the, man said, so the woman answered in the affirmative. Uh, the man heard that uh, his wife had been practicing adultery. So he said, in their own tradition, no woman dare do it. Any woman that does that will be killed by, by the powers. No, in is their it adul adultery, adultery or idolatry? Adultery. Adultery, okay. Yeah. Infidelity in marriage. Infidelity, okay. yes. So in the tradition of the husband, no woman dare do that. The idols in his father's house will kill the woman. If the woman has had children, the idol will be killing the children one after the other. But because this man, this woman has not had any issue, so 
they were concentrated on on, on her. Mm. But because she is a, she is a believer, so so to say, so they were troubling her for the past ten years, every day hospital. So uh, with that, I was able to really mm. go into that. Then many at times when there, there's something we call covenant, when you covenanted with idols, they we want to they want their payback. Mm. Satan has no free gift. Mm. When he gives you something, he must take multiple of it. In Yoruba language, we say, my father had one idol called Eshu. So when we, when we worship the Eshu, we say, mm. He who gives us chicken, but he takes cow. Cow. Small chicken, and such a big cow. cow. Mm. So when he gives you something, don't don't hesitate. He will take a larger thing. He will take a larger thing uh, from, from you. you. There's something yeah. I want to. You, know, you, you gave an example of uh, a lady whose culture of the husband is dealing with her. Someone mentioned to me the other time that there are positive sides of this our culture. For instance, the Igbo people say that if the woman sleeps with another man, mm -hmm. that there is a culture, there is a thing in their family mm -hmm. that will kill the, the woman. woman and stuff like that. Let's look at that, sir. This side, I mean, is, is that a positive thing in our culture? Hmm. I will say no. I will say no. Uh, if everybody is a child of God, there's a way to handle that. Preaching, reading the scriptures, we handle that area. And if that happens in the traditional setting, the woman will be killed. So there is no way for repentance. Mm. But in, in, in that of uh, Jesus Christ, there is a, there is, there, there is a chance for repentance. Mm. You confess your sins, you repent, and God forgives you. There is no forgiveness with, uh, with the Satan. traditional... They don't, they don't have forgiveness. Mm. They don't have. Let me ask another question. Now. Um, the second question I have here um, uh, is the feeling that there are good witches your Bible will call them white witches. When Hobart Ogunde, the famous uh, dramatist, the Nigerian uh, Alan Ejo Theater, yes. came up with a film called Aye Jaye Semi. I don't know if you watch those films, those, those years there. Uh -huh. Those films really brought these things into the consciousness of our people. Aje Fufu, Aje Pupa, Aje Dudu, you know, and stuff like that there. I mean, do they actually exist? Is, there, is this idea of a white witches that white witches are good some of them will even say look let your mother be a white witch she will be protecting you and stuff like that <laughs> tell me is is there anything like a white witch is it good to be a member of a white white uh, uh, witches or something there are white witches there are black ones there are red ones none of them is good in the in the biblical sense of it mm. something that is bad is bad if you belong to white wishes, who controls you? Satan. Hmm. If you belong to black or you belong to red wishes, who controls? It is Satan. And where Satan goes, his followers will go. They will all end up in, uh, in hellfire. You know, why they are saying one is good, the other one is bad, is that there are some that will kill. Some of them don't kill. Hmm. For instance, the white, the white wishes, they claim that... Uh, uh, they don't kill. They settle matters. Uh, they are of. Uh, they, they are. They are partly water demons, marine demons. Mm. So when you see them wearing white, uh, worshiping idols covered with white cloth or white paint, that's a uh, marine demons. Marine demons. They don't kill, but they they kill alive. When they remove the virtues, they they destroy one's destinies. What else remains? Mm. And then you have to serve them. So when you die, you go to where they, where they, are. Where they are. So all of them are the same. Only that they have some uh, uh, differences. You know, like uh, uh, there's a demon called Baal. Baal is in charge of uh, uh, black wishes. You understand? So uh, the, under that, we have a Bazebub. Basibu, the most weakest uh, demon in the kingdom of darkness. That one is directly in charge of uh, these wishes. That one kills. In fact, 
that one uh, consume human beings, human flesh. Mm. So, but the other side that mm. controls uh, white wishes, they don't kill. They don't kill. But all of them are kingdom of darkness. That yes. There is this feeling that uh, yeah, this this uh, demons, witches, can possess anybody. That they can come physically into and occupy the the body. I yes. mean, is it really true? Now let's look at it. That uh, um, can anyone be possessed unknowingly? Yes, one can be possessed unknowingly. In fact, many many Christians are possessed without knowing. Many Christians. Yes. There is what we call blind wishes. They are wishes, but they don't know that they are wishes. How? When they sleep, they, they attend meetings. They carry out whatever uh, instruction they are given. Go and kill that. Go and do that. They will do it. But when they wake up, they don't remember. Mm. Their master has we raise it totally. They don't remember. They won't know that they are wishes until when they meet with the power of God. Their demonstration, what they say out, we determine whether they are wishes or mm -hmm. not. So one can be a possess without knowing through one's parents, through covenants of our fathers. By eating the what we eat, what eat, we eat. Yes, eating the dream. They use that to initiate people into their group. Let me tell you one. I have an experience, personal experience. One day I was going to Agege. I I went through Oshodi. So I saw some imported pants. I love them. New ones, not old ones, new ones. So they pack it in dozens. So I negotiated for half dozen. I paid. I brought them home. The next morning, I put it on. You know, that night, I had sex throughout the night. In the dream? In the dream. It was marathon. And I was already into deliverance. So when I woke up and I, ah, oh, what is this? I said, I have sinned. Maybe I have offended God. I immediately, I turned into fasting and prayer. I prayed throughout. I didn't go out of my room. So I, I broke my prayer, prayer and my fasting at 6 p.m. I went and bathed. I took another one among the six. I put it on again. <laughs> the, the, same same, thing. the same thing happened. So I fasted again. The third night, I put unknowingly, I put on one of the old ones. So the dream did not happen. Mm. On the fourth night, I put on one of the new ones. It happened again. It was then I, I now associated with it. It might be this pants. So I brought out all, both the old and the new ones. Mm. I prayed over them for a whole day because I didn't want to throw them away. Mm. That's how it stopped. it stopped. So many things we buy in the market, so many things we put on our bodies, they, they were produced by agents of Satan in, in order to initiate people. You know, I was praying with a lady one day in the days of Moldwe. She said, whenever they are sent out for evangelism, demonic evangelism, he said she will enter Moldwe and uh, when she's getting up, she will drop an unseen thing on, the, on that seat. Mm. The next person to sit on that place in the night, he will just see himself or herself in their meeting. He, she or she has become a member. A member. He said, she said, except the next person that will sit on that place is a real child of God, highly anointed. It is then that thing will not affect him. So one can be initiated without knowing. You just find yourself in where you don't want. So that's why Christians must be at alert every time. Mm. Prayerful. Filled with the word of God. Filled with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. One of the challenges most Christians have, just as you have uh, narrated, sex in the dream. Mm -hmm. Eating in the dream. Mm -hmm. Someone like me, I, will, I can eat anything in the dream. Until recently that uh, the Lord delivered me Good. from that. Some of them will tell you that, uh, look, they enjoy that experience of uh, having sex in the dream. That yeah, is very pleasurable though, that you, will, you can... They will find themselves with beautiful girls and stuff like that. Now, a Christian having this kind of challenge regularly, what can he do concerning food? When you find yourself in the middle of the night, you were eating best food, and then you wake up 
that kind of thing. How can this child, I mean, these uh, Christians take charge of themselves when things like this happen? Especially when you wake up maybe around 3 a.m. or you will have done it. Then you wake up and you find yourself. What can you do immediately? And before I answer your question, let okay, me... Uh, eating in the dream, having sex in the dream, they are all under covenant. Immediately you do that, you have already entered into covenant with the kingdom of darkness. You have become one with them. So, a child of God in covenant with Satan is, is uh, pathetic. Mm. So, when, when, when that happens, it depends on the Christian's uh, knowledge, level of understanding about deliverance. Okay. There is what we call self-deliverance. But if you cannot deliver yourself, you quickly run to your pastor or to whoever who yeah, can be able, can to, be able deliver. to deliver yes. you. Mm. Uh, so that's what, that's, that's what he can do in, in a very short uh, sentence. Okay. Go for deliverance immediately. But if you know how to deliver yourself, you can, you can you do can that. You can get to deliver. Yes. Can a pastor doing deliverance be possessed? Can he become a victim of what he seeks to deliver people from? That is it uh yes yes uh he the, jesus said he who he who stands let him take mm, it let he fall. fall and number two is that a deliverance minister has become a target for the kingdom of darkness so many a times when i minister deliverance they will say well, we know you the demons will be speaking out of the mm. uh, of the person. We know you. We have been troubling us all this while. We have been troubling us. They know. So the deliverance minister is in is in the bad record of uh, of the kingdom of darkness. So he or she must be very careful. Wash your ways. What wash what you do. Wash mm. what you eat. For for instance, as a deliverance minister, you cannot just enter any book and be eating. Yes, mm. You can't just because you don't know who is running the booker. The booker. Maybe it's an agent. He can drop anything in the food spiritually to attack the uh, the deliverance minister. So it is possible. Deliverance ministers can be can possessed. Be possessed. Mm. But, but he can he can be possessed if he is at a large, he is at the side of Jesus every time. Every time. Mm. Uh -huh. So that's uh, uh that's in the Bible school. Uh, there is a course we call demonology, yes. where they bring uh, the, 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 the pastors under training yeah. to the consciousness of how these people uh, exist there. Can deliverance be taught in the Bible school? Yes, and I recommend it that it should be taught in all seminaries. All seminaries. Why? Uh, the, the kingdom of darkness changes their method every time. And thank God for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit also changes his method. Let's, when we look into uh, church history, you know, Catholic, the Protestants, the Baptists, the Evangelical, the Pentecostals, mm. you know, they, they have different methods. Different methods. Mm. And they were given by the Holy Spirit. So, uh, in our Bible schools, Demonology, you know, is a word, a yeah. two, two mm. words combined together. Mm. Demon, logic. Logic means study. That is, studying of demons. All ministers are required to be able to minister deliverance mm. to their members. So, uh, it is very, very important for seminaries to teach deliverance. What is, uh, you know, when we teach deliverance, when we teach demonology in Bible schools, it enables the will-be pastor to know the activities of the kingdom of darkness. Mm. You know how they operate. You, uh, there's this fear among Christians that they cannot confront demons. Whereas Jesus Christ our Lord has uh, won the battle for us. Mm. What we need to do is just be in Christ. The and rest, is, the rest mm. is history. Mm. That's simple. That's simple. But many Christians don't want to run away from sin. So when, when you are still practicing sin, it, it, it makes it difficult to overcome the kingdom of darkness. Mm. So with Christ, all things uh, are possible. possible. Mm. That is, so, that's it. Um, a man sent a message to me here. He said that uh, I have a challenge. I went to rent a house and I bought a land subsequently. 
But I want to escape the possibility of being in the possessed land or being in a possessed house. Yes. What can he do? When you want to do things like this, what can you yes. do? Many houses are demonized these days. It is not only human beings that can be demonized. Mm. Trees, animals, even fowls, even birds, everything. There are, there are rocks. There are rocks that, are, that, are, that have become a habitat for demons. Demons dwell inside rocks. So the same thing with houses. Many landlords or uh, house owners, when they, want, when they are building, they put, they plant mm. some things. Mm. So, and where do they get those things? from Habalis. And when the Habalis is preparing it, he will say some incantation. Incantations deal with demons, invoking demons into that thing. It is not what the, the Habalis gives the landowner or the house owner that, that, is, that is working. Mm. It is the demon they call into that thing. And he will go and plant it in his house. So the demon has already taken over. So the demon will be uh, troubling the, the occupants, occupants, either the tenant or the landlord. And so what anybody that wants to rent a house or you want to buy a land, what you should do is just to pray. You've seen the house, you like it, go to God. Lord, should I hmm. go into this house? Will I live in peace? There, you know, there are so many tenants. When they pack in, they pack in with, uh, with uh, many blessings many properties mm. but after about two three years they will be selling the properties to eat mm. that means something is wrong something is wrong right the bible says when the foundation is faulty destroyed, mm, destroyed. what can the righteous, righteous do? do so in that case to deliver the house the landowner or the house owner must be in partnership with the deliverance minister mm. if he is against this there is nothing the deliverance minister can do. Really? Yes. You pray. The demons will go, but they will come back. They will come back. After you have left, they will come back. Because the, 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 the person that invited them still wants them back. So they will come back. Mm -hmm. But in your presence, they may go. As you left, they will, come, they will still come back. So mm. I see something about, and this is very common, with a lot of Christians putting Bible under their pillow. When they want to sleep, osmosis. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing they find is uh, what they do is that uh, when they just give back to a new baby, uh -huh. they will open the Bible to Psalm, Psalm something, 23. Psalm, Psalm 23, 23, and they will put it uh, <laughs> under the pillow of the baby. I find out that these are people who don't go to church, but they will do they do things like this. Please, can you ex can you please talk to these people like this? Does that does the God? Listen to the opening Bible that you don't read or things like that. So please, you're over to you, sir. Yeah, um, I have a friend, uh, but it's of blessed memory now. He has died. He was a soldier. So when he is visiting me from the front of the house, I I knew that uh, so and so person is coming. So because of the way he walks, when he knocks, he knocks as if he wants to break the door. I'm used, I was used to mm. his way of life. So I don't need to ask, who is at the door? Immediately he knocked, I will open because I knew it was him. Zoom. So the same thing, when we relate with God, he, before we start praying, God knows, yes, that's my son. That's my son. So yeah. by opening Bible, he doesn't do anything. Logos and Rhema. Yeah? Logos doesn't do anything. The Logos is the written word. But when the Holy Spirit uh, 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 combines with the written word, it becomes Rhema. It is Rhema that works. When the word of God combines with your faith and you put it into practice, it is then it, is then it works. When you pronounce it. You know, Satan was quoting the word of God to Jesus. Mm, to Jesus. Mm. So it didn't have effect on him. But when Jesus pronounced the word of God, it had effect. Because the word of God combined with faith in Jesus and with the anointing with which Jesus Christ pronounced it, it had effect on, on, on Lucifer. Mm -hmm. So he ran away. So putting Bible on the, under the pillow, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> uh, there's another question I just received here now. People watching online. 
People talk about the name of Jesus as more powerful than these negative forces. We see people use anointing oil handkerchief called mantu, water broom. We have seen prostitutes shouting the name of Jesus when they fall into trouble. Does Jesus respond to these shouts? Who can shout Jesus and see Jesus act on his behalf? There are three questions there. Mm. Uh, mantu, handkerchiefs, apron, they do work. We have it in the Bible. Depending on the faith of whoever releases the mantle or the handkerchief, mm. even if it's to a non believer, it may work. Now, uh, shouting the name of Jesus, it doesn't work for everybody. The name of Jesus is not for everybody, it is for there are bastards and there are sons and daughters. The name of Jesus is for sons and daughters of God, not for bastards. No. So, uh, there are demons. There are demons. Look at uh, the seven sons of uh, Skepha. Skepha. So they say, We are Jordi by the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. The demon didn't, <laughs> the demon didn't obey them. The man that is harboring the demon pounced on them and tore their clothes. See, they said, Paul, we know. Jesus, we know. Who are you? So it is when you are in Christ Jesus that. The name of Jesus will work for you. Jesus says something. He said, the works that I did, you shall do, because I go unto my Father. Mm. And so, when we are in Christ Jesus, we will do what he did. And what are the works? Mark, Mark, Mark 16, 17 and 18, he said, These signs shall follow them that I believe. In my name, they will cast out demons, they will speak in tongues. If they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. Mm. And they will take up serpents. It, they will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So, how many of these that are shouting the name of Jesus can do all this? So, you know, uh, these days, it's a pity. We, we carry religion these days. Thank God I gave my life to Christ in the 70s. You know, at that time, when you see a child of God, you know immediately that this is a child of God. That's the question I want to ask. Yes. When you see pastors that are not of God, I mean, you find a lot of pastors, so mm. many of them, mm. that they, I mean, they say they use negative mm. powers there. How do you know? When you go to a church, how do you know this church is of Jesus and this church is for... God is a spirit. And those that will worship him must worship him in spirit and, and in truth. truth. When you are in the spirit, you enter a church, you will know immediately whether this church is of God or not. That's number one. Mm. Number two, listen to the message of the, uh, the pastor or the leader there. Listen to what he says. Mm. So, the Spirit of God, you know, like uh, the Bible says that we should judge uh, pro uh, prophecies. prophecies okay. uh -huh. You judge prophecies with, by the Word of God and by the Holy Spirit. You listen as he is speaking. Now, there are some things that are very common to such pastors. Number one, they always swear that uh, if I put anything, if I add anything to this minute, to this work, that's them. Mm. You don't need to swear. You don't need to tell your members that you are not adding anything. When they don't see anything, they are, they are, they are having guilty conscience. I accept I don't, I accept I had something. Number two, they don't preach, such pastors don't preach against sin any longer. They don't preach hell. They don't preach heaven. They only preach prosperity they preach love. Love one another. Do good. They won't preach sin. Number, uh, number three, uh, the, 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 their love, their love for the things of God will reduce. Their love for studying the word is zero. They don't study the word of God any longer. They depend on vision and the power they have acquired. They don't. They love luxury. They don't hardly will you see them fasting any longer. Then, most importantly, their way of life. Jesus said, by their fruits, we shall, you know, shall them. know them. So when they go into fornication, they begin to have sex with the members of the church, you know that uh, no, this is out of this it. This is out of it. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Wow. Now, earlier, you mentioned how people can be initiated knowingly or unknowingly. Okay. Let's look at it into detail so that we can guide our people in the church. 
what are the processes how can you get involved or how can you be initiated you've mentioned the uh, true eating true sex Dream. in dreams and yes. stuff like that let us go a bit uh deeper in, in, deeper in the in all this sir. okay uh covenant number one okay um covenant can be ancestral and it can be personal there are some covenants that have been entered into by our forefathers so and the the demons assigned to see to the fulfillment of that covenant is always there i held a crusade in ikorodu some years ago after the one of the nights a brother came and said we should pray for for him so I gathered my ministers, we prayed. The second day he came, and he said he had te he has a testimony. What is your testimony? He said, when he got home, he slept. He was 45 years old, not yet married. Mm. 45, 45, 45 not, not yet married. And he has only one small bed, one wooden table and one wooden chair in his room. He said, he woke up in the dead of the night to see somebody beside him in that small bed. He looked at the window. The window was not broken. The door was not broken. Who is this? So he gently uh, got out of bed and went for a stick and was using the stick to, uh, to wake the person. Who are you? He said, this being, they don't even talk. Who are you? Where did you come from? How did you enter? He said, after some time, the, the, it was a demon. The demon got up and was going towards the door. When he got to the door, he held the handle of the door and looked back. He said, if not because of where you went yesterday night, and they used the name of the righteous man to pray for you, I wouldn't have left you. He said, he said I have been in this family for 200 years. Mm. He said, but because they used the name of that righteous man to pray for you, you are free. You are free. And then he just disappeared into the door. He, he didn't open the door. Mm. So, covenant. One of his forefathers might have had contact with the demon and invited him into that generation. You know, when these idol people, when they are worshipping idols, uh, when they are very excited, they will say, they and they are, they are children mm. to come, they are for you, mm. idol. That statement is enough. Demons will just hold to that statement. And we'll be walking like God. You know, God made a covenant with Abraham, and God extends the covenant mm, to his up descendants till, up till, till date. today, Israelites. That's one of the uh, ways. Uh, through, through eating, I've mentioned that. Then, eh? a child, yes, child. When people look for children, they go to different places. Uh, I met one, maybe, maybe I'm not taking time. No, no, go on, uh -huh. sir. Go on, sir. I met one in one of the, I don't want to mention the College of Education. So we were invited to, to minister deliverance in one of the fellowships. So this lady, the demons refused to get out. We have ministered to others, they have left. So the answer sometimes said, Don't you have eyes? Look at, I have my, my mark on her. What is your mark? He said, remove the scarf. We remove the scarf. Is this a, a dada something? Mm. He said, that's my mark. He said, before you can cast me out, go and ask her mommy. Mm. We followed her home. We appealed to the mommy, and then she opened up that it took her many years before she can mm. have uh, children. So she went to a herbalist, and the herbalist took her to a river. When they got there, the herbalist made some incantations, and uh, Mami Water came up and sat on top of the on top of the water. And the herbalist spoke to the Mami Water. And said, it is we come because of this woman. She is looking for children. The Mami Water said, "Okay, I will give you, but it is a deal." The name of the child will be called Olubu. That no other person should know, but only three of them. And that same month, the woman got pregnant. And within the woman, she knew that this is Olubu. So, 
That's a covenant. Mm. The, the lady didn't know because the mother didn't tell her. Didn't tell her. He, no. And she was attending fellowship with the aim of uh, making heaven, serving Christ. So when people look for children, when you go, when you visit a herbalist, at least one demon will follow you home. At least. When you consult with herbalists, at least one demon. So mere entry into places. There are some places a child of God shouldn't enter. Like private parts now. There are some private parts that are demonic. When you enter, you get what you don't want. So, so many like that food, maybe they, want, they are throwing party and the party is for ritual. And you go there, you eat uh, ritual, ritual food automatically. You become possessed. Uh, so we should be very careful about attending parties. I, we should be very careful. <laughs> so many bad days. So many bad days are not bad days. They are rituals. So as many as eat that food that day, they will serve that person throughout the whole year. So all their virtues will be for the person that threw the party. So we should be very, very, very careful. Uh, we, see, we see a lot of things uh, in Yoruba home videos. Are these things real? They are real. Only that they, they, they paint it a little mm. bit uh, to be more uh, okay. presentable. presentable okay. uh, mm. Many of them are real. There is a question here I just received. They said, why is which is the most feared in the kingdom of, uh, of darkness. darkness? What are the other powers in the satanic kingdom that one needs to know and how to deal with them? The kingdom of darkness... It's an, it's an organized kingdom. It's an organized kingdom. Organized. Very, very well organized. Paul saw a little into it and he gave us the hierarchies in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. He said, Satan is up there, followed by principalities, followed by powers, followed by rulers of darkness, and the last rung is uh, spiritual wickedness mm. in high places. So, it's a very long uh, teaching. Mm. The principalities, there are four in number. The powers are eight in number. The rulers of darkness, there are many, but they operate in groups. One of the groups is marine demons. When you study marine demons, you can study them according to their hab ha habitation. You can also study them according to their activities. When you study them according to their habitation, we have about seven types the ones in the sea are different from the ones in the flowing rivers are different from the one in the lake that of uh, lagoon there are some dwelling inside trees there are some dwelling inside rock all those trees you see people putting sacrifices mm. yes it is marine that dwells in such trees so there are some that that they don't have a address they they meander, they move around in the forest. Let me say this. When you, when you are taken to forest, in Yoruba language, they take them to go and bath in a thick forest. Such people are dedicated to those demons that roam about. They are very short like this. I saw them before in my primary school days. But that's a... Let's, Is it? Uh, I will come to that. Okay. Just go ahead, sir. So, uh, they are of different hierarchies. Wishes are in the last group, the spiritual wickedness. They are the least the there. Least. And yet the most feared. Why? <laughs> they, they are the ones that are, they really have contact with human beings. Mm. All those ones rarely have contact with human beings. Like, uh, like uh, Buhari now, he can't come here and sit down here. He can't come to the market. Mm. He is up there giving orders. You know, Satan conceived the idea. The, the principalities, they planned what they would do. The powers, they executed. So they have their different functions. Mm. So there are so many demons dwelling in the second heaven. They don't have contact with human beings. It is the messengers that have contact with human beings. So we are uh, many human beings are not conscious of those ones that they don't see. They don't see. That's why they, it seems as if they fear 
wishes and witchcraft more than any other no, 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 no. you just mentioned something uh, second heaven we hear it third heaven yes. uh, people will say there are seven heavens and stuff like that please explain this there are only three heavens okay. according to the bible three in the bible yes in the book of galatians okay so the last heaven there is where god dwells the middle one is where demons dwell then the first one is the one we can see here hmm. and so there are only three heavens that's why when angel gabriel was coming from god he needed to pass through the second heaven then prince of Persia held him down you know so there's no other way he could pass and why why was it possible for a prince of Persia to hold an angel of god angel gabriel was not created for war he was created to carry good news okay so so That's he can he, he can be held as like a civilian now you can't stand a trained soldier you don't you don't know the the art of making war you don't know how to make war you don't have i don't know how to cock gun i don't know so so they held him down so they needed to pass through the second heaven and then this atmosphere is the first one so I that's see. about uh, about that, that. Uh, if we die as a, i mean when we when we finish here yes. where are we going third heaven or second <laughs> heaven where do we go to no uh that's it that's it hell, hell let me start from the beginning hell is divided into three parts we have where the fire is we have one we call tartarus and we have one called paradise i will explain when jesus had not come when he had not died mm. saints were, were were kept in paradise no saints had the opportunity to go to where god was as at that time because the best the only one that can open the gate to heaven had not come had not died human beings didn't have the opportunity to enter to where god mm. was as that so they were kept in paradise so when jesus christ came you know when he died you know he he went to hell yeah. i think you know yeah. so mm. he went to hell to to carry out three functions mm. number one to preach the gospel to the dead that's first peter chapter 3 verses 18 to 20 and chapter 4 verse 6. he went to preach the gospel to the dead number two he went to fight with the kingdom of darkness to take the, the authority the keys mm -hmm. and number three to go and release the, st the saints so that's why the bible says he led captivity captives and he gave gifts unto men those that were kept in in paradise jesus took them out and those were the first fruit he presented to god when he rose mm. to uh, to present what he has done to god and when god said sanction it as good so they were they, they so presently nobody is in paradise because jesus has opened the gate of heaven for human beings any child of god that dies now goes straight to heaven did i answer yeah yeah you answered you answered the question because uh, i mean this is a levels this is a level <laughs> christianity i mean uh, these are things that uh, many people don't uh, don't know um well, you know, one of the things that confuses uh, one of the things that confuses us is when you say heaven, God is in heaven, right? But why is it in, in, in uh, Genesis? You say in the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. Where was God when He was creating heaven and earth? When you look at that, the heaven there is pluralized. Mm, yeah, heavens. Mm. It's heavens. So all those. Uh, in it is geography that now uh, explain things better to us the heavens all those planets the bible called them heavens mm. the saturn the pluto, pluto uh, all mm, those Uranus. things uh, then even apart from the ones we know there are so there's one we call galaxy way the milky ways mm. all these stars we can see now they are bigger than our sun mm. than the the normal sun we have mm. here they are bigger than our own sun. So they have their own planets also. All those ones are in the second heaven. And demons dwell more in those places. Mm. So, so when the Bible says he created heavens and earth, 
He is not where God is. He, he created the planets, the Milky Ways, the galaxies, all those ones, all those mm, things. So I see. That, I that's see. it. I, see. I have a question, another question here. What is the difference between possession by the evil spirit, oppression by the evil spirit, and then you said the uh, obsession. Obsession. Yes. Possession, obsession, oppression. Mm, okay. Possession, okay. obsession, and possession. And possession. No, no, you are mentioning okay. it. Possession, oppression. Mm, oppression one. Okay. Oppression is the first one. First one, okay. Followed by obsession. Obsession. Then, then possession. Possession. Please, can you explain yes. this? Human beings, we are three in one. We have body, soul, and, and spirit. Don't we normally start from the spirit, spirit, soul, and body? Mm. So, oppressions occurs in the body. Mm. Like all these sicknesses, diseases, they are oppressions, oppressions of the devil. Mm. Obsession occurs in the soul, while possession is in the spirit. When any demon enters into human beings, mm. his target is the spirit of the person. He doesn't want to stay in the body alone. He doesn't want to stay in the soul. His target is to get to the spirit. Because the spirit controls all the world. Our real us is our spirit. This body will die one day. Mm. We will finish everything. So, anybody that, that is able to control the spirit man of a person can control that his control whole him. life. So, and uh, you see some people, when the demon has really entered into their spirit, they don't know what they do any longer. They don't know what they do. Like these uh, mad people, they open their body, they do things irrationally. So, I, I met one of them one day. After deliverance, he, he, God really saved him. So when he was telling me his experience, he said, you know, he had been going around the city naked. He's, he's a man. So when he got uh, delivered, he said, he normally see the demons. They talk to him, they walk by his side, mm. and they will be telling him that, look at those people who are putting on cloth. Those are the mad people. You now that he's naked, you are the... <laughs> you, are the <laughs> <laughs> you are the... So he said he will be, he will be proud of being naked. Mm. Because of what the demons were telling him. So they had really taken possession. That's possession, possession. of his spirit. He, he can't control himself any longer. It is whatever the demons uh, tell him that he must do. But when it is uh, oppression, oppression takes place in the body. It may result to, to pains, to uh, diseases, sicknesses. Then obsession is in the mind, the soul. So... People hear strange voices. So, people think about evil things. They suggest evil into their into mind. The mind. Yes, mm. that's obsession. When wrong suggestions, he'll be hearing. He hears what others are not hearing. So, he hears voices. They call his name. So, they are, they are, that's the level where his problem is yes. in the mind, mm. in the soul. Mm. You know, soul is divided into three, I think. You know. Yeah, the soul. Come, come again. Uh, yes, soul, soul. Soul, okay. In, all in all, we are nine. All in <laughs> all, in all we are is, nine. I told you this okay. is A levels. Please, okay. go on. The body is divisible into three. Bone, flesh, and blood. Mm. The soul is divisible into three. Mind, will, and emotion. Okay. So, we are dealing with the mind now. Mind. That's where you used to think. Okay. You think rationally or irrationally. Emotion. Emotion. An example of emotion is love, hatred, all those things. Mm. So then, will. That's where we use to decide. Decide. Okay. Decision. Decision. All those ones take place in the soul. Why the spirit also is divisible into three. Uh, communion. Um... If I will remember now. Okay. So, it's, they are, it's divisible into three. Maybe if I remember, if I will remember. remember. Okay, all right. So, so, when you are hearing or when you are thinking evils, that's obsession. Go and fornicate. Go and fornicate. Go and fornicate. And, and then the person feels restless. 
until he fornicates. He until he does it. So mm. that one is taking place in his soul. So what led us to that is uh, about this uh, wishes. Yeah, the wishes. Uh, yeah. 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 So mm. so they are familiar to us. They relate with us more than all the other. At what demons. point will you say a man will decide to commit suicide? I have seen people going to Todd Milan bridges, sit on the on the railing really? there. And then they will Jump. plunge into something there. Please explain. At what level do you get there? How can you, the, the suicidal thoughts, you know, w w I mean, how, how, how can you battle it? That is, what leads to that yes, kind of that, self-destruction? That, that's, why, that's why we must not keep quiet. He, who's, he who stands, let him take heed, lest he fall. Mm. The devil doesn't respect anybody. He tempts everybody. If he was able to tempt Jesus, who are we? But the issue there is that when you are tempted, it has not become sin. It is when you fall into the temptation that it becomes sin. So he transmits, he transmits messages to people's minds. He's by giving suggestions, suggestions. So all those people that commit suicide, it doesn't start in one day. Hmm. Little by little, little by little. But because they didn't shout. If they had gone to their pastor, pastor, this is what I'm experiencing. And if the pastor understands, he knows what to, what to do to help such an indi individual. But because they have been keeping it, it will result to uh, 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 being moved, uh, staying alone. They don't relate with others any longer. Uh, at that point, demons are really dwelling with, with him. They bombard his mind with so many suggestions. You are alone. Nobody loves you. Hmm? finish it just finish everything round it up a man dies only but once mm. all those suggestions will be coming they compare his look at your friend he is richer than you look at that look at your life you are not making it you know, the best thing is just to finish everything so when such a person allows that to grow and grow and grow in him it results it results to... so there's there are there are demons for suicide so in that case, that such a person needs deliverance from suicidal demons. demons. Uh, this question, sir, I've had people say this in their churches. I mean, a man wrote to me when I said, <laughs> he will not go to a church where they will be praying so, our father who art in heaven, yeah. hallowed be thy name. <laughs> he said such prayers cannot help him. He said he wants to, he will attend the church where they will say, Fire, pere, pere. Ogwa, ogwa, Jesu Christi. Kili, aye. Kitre, la, da. Holy Ghost, fire. Holy Ghost, fire. He said those are the kind of prayer. Please, educate us on things like this. Is, until, does it, is, is prayer by shouting? Is prayer by, Oluwa, fire, pere, pere, and stuff like that? Demons understand all languages. If you speak Yoruba, they understand. If you speak English, they understand. And demons are behind problems. So, it all depends on our anointing. You know, we Africans, we have a problem. Because of our background. Idolatrous background. Mm. When people worship idols, they shout. They sing. They dance. They somersault. In order to please the idol. No wonder Elijah was teasing the prophets of Baal. He said, shout more. Maybe your, your, your Baal has gone to, uh, on a journey. And they were shouting. They were uh, mm. lacerating yes, their mm. body. So that is the background many of us Africans brought into Christianity. Look at the way Jesus handled. What do you want me to do for you? He said, that time is, he said, see. Jesus won't shout. Mm. Mm. He speaks gently, but that gentle speaking carries a lot of anointing. It is anointing that determines whether what you say will come to pass or not. It is not whether you shout or not. So, but you, can't, you can't shout down Satan if there's no anointing in your life. Mm. So, either you speak gently or you shout, you must have the anointing. It is anointing that demons respect. They don't respect us without the anointing of When we say anointing, mm -hmm. 
Please, can you explain it? Anointing. Three words for it. Anointing, fire, and the power of the Holy Spirit. They mean the same thing. And so, the more you relate with God, the more you are in the presence of God, the more the anointing that is released into mm. your life. Anointing comes by relationship, by fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So, the more you have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, the more you have time for the Holy Spirit, meditate in the Word, be on your knees, be in the presence of God, then live holy life. Your anointing will be increasing. Mm. It will be increasing. So, so, when you go out and preach, you know, you know, when Jesus Christ wanted to start his own ministry, he spent 40 days, 40 nights, eating nothing in the presence of God. And every morning, before Peter and the rest will wake up, Jesus had been on, mm, on his knees. Mm. So he is always having fellowship with the Father and with the Holy Spirit. So the anointing was always there. And mm. he was also, the Bible says he has the seven spirits of God. What are the basic steps or things you can do for self-deliverance? You said something earlier, I mean, where people, mm -hmm. maybe you have sex in dream, mm -hmm. or you eat in dream, yes. you say they can deliver themselves. Yes. Can you explain how to how you can deliver yourself? There are only two like conditions this? to it. Only okay. two conditions. You want to deliver yourself. Number one, you must have the knowledge of what is happening in your life. Mm. That is, you must know the demon. Mm -hmm. Okay. You must know the demon that is in operation. And you know its characteristics. You ate in the dream. What are the demons that normally bring food? What are their characteristics? What are their weak points? How do you handle them? That's one. Mm. Two, your, the anointing, the power of God in your life. Christians are on different levels when we talk about anointing. anointing. Mm -hmm. So the anointing in you, is it enough to confront the demon? As we are on different levels of anointing, the same thing, these demons are on different levels of power. Mm. They are on different hierarchies. The demon that come, the anointing on you, in you, is it enough to subdue that demon? If it is enough, you can deliver yourself. Mm. So you, you look at the anointing in you and your knowledge of the demon, of the demon that is in operation, that is operation there. Yes, at yes. what level can you seek or maybe at what level of, of oppression or um, must you seek counseling or maybe a kind of deliverance from a deliverance minister uh, you, everybody knows himself you know your level in christ you know especially when you observe that a particular issue is always coming a particular problem or mm. a dream is always coming up in your life you have prayed it seems as if it will not go you better seek mm. for the assistance, assistance of, okay. an, of another person that means that uh, your, your anointing is not it's not enough to confront that, uh, mm. that evil spirit. yes mm. you go a man told it, me it is not a sin to, to to seek for deliverance in fact it's a thing of joy we is we are claiming what jesus christ had done for us he procured it for us victory over over evil powers evil spirits mm. so when you go for deliverance you don't need to be shy the the, the yeah. issue the the thought of a lot of people about deliverance is that is when you are oppressed when you are possessed okay. by evil spirit or you say oh there is a witches in my family there is this in my family that is the level when they say go for deliverance they say ah kilo day deliverance mm -hmm. the level here at what point i mean how would i get there who should go for deliverance um we go for deliverance when you when you observe that your prayer life is going down the way you have been meditating in the word of god before is now reducing you better go for deliverance that means your spiritual power is going down because of an oppression of one power or the other mm. so it's not only mm. when you are possessed so for instance you begin to hear some voices some suggestions go for deliverance or you do it for yourself so 
Everybody needs deliverance. Mm. Let me put it that way. Everybody. Everybody needs deliverance. As long as we are still here in this world, we all need deliverance. A man said the question to me that uh, is like the power of poverty has not left his family and he noticed it was there in his generation, in the life of his daddy, in the life of his uh, grandfather and he's coming into his life now and then he can even see some traces of it in the life of his children because many of them don't want to walk. Many of them are lazy and stuff like that. Can you be delivered from poverty? Is it not a matter of hard work? <laughs> covenants causes evil agreements they cause poverty there are some demons you covenanted with they they bless the person with poverty bless in quote now so you know idolatry is a cause mm. the cause of god is upon whoever is worshiping, worshiping idols, idols. Mm -hmm. so poverty can manifest through that so and it can be generational it can be generational many a times it can be by personally committed sins the sin we commit by ourselves mm. we can invite them we can invite poverty on our own for instance laziness can cause poverty that may not be that may not be a cause but it can be uh, one of the sources of uh, poverty uh, so so when there are generations like that, when, when, when poverty has become a thing of generation, whoever wants to be free should sit down and study and pray. What is the cause? How did this start? Mm. It must have started 100 years ago. Like the example I gave the other time, 200 years. The, the brothers said the earliest time in their family to marry, the earliest time, is 45 years right so there were some of them that married at 50. so that's marital poverty marital poverty, yeah, marital mm. poverty. so you sit down if you can if you don't have any elderly person in your generation consult the holy spirit when you consult you show me the source what did somebody do that made this poverty to enter into this lineage the Holy Spirit will, will reveal, it. reveal it to you. So after after getting it, you can now go for deliverance. deliverance. You don't just say eh, poverty, poverty. That is why it seems as if deliverance is not effective these days. People don't sit down to find out the root cause of their problem before they go for poverty and for deliverance. For deliverance. And many deliverance ministers, when they just come, they just pounce on the person and begin to pray. They don't take time to seek for the source of that problem is this sickness what is the problem what is the source is it a uh, poverty is it uh, whatever it is seek for the source when you get is the source the problem is half solved, half -solved. Mm. that's uh, is there any danger in having dreams and you don't remember when you wake up in the morning yes uh god speaks to us through our dreams um, because men are so occupied in the afternoon, running up and down, when men slept, according to the book of Job, when men slept, God speaks to us through our dreams. It, it is very, very dangerous to have dreams and not to remember. In fact, the devil is happy, and he is the source. He erases dreams so that the person will not go and look for solution. So when you dream and you don't remember, please run immediately. Go for deliverance. Because the devil may be, will be shitting you, not allowing you to know what to pray for mm. or what to pray against, what to reject or what to accept. So demons send people on errand. Demon walks on people's lives in the dream. So we must remember in order to tackle him to and, tackle pull him him and put him down yeah. all right what are the signs that uh, you see in your life that will tell you that you are possessed or that there are challenges or, with or you oppressed or, or you are obsessed, oppressed yeah, yeah. obsessed yes. yes what are the signs that uh, you need to watch out for the red flags 
there are physical ones and there are spiritual ones. For instance, uh, these uh, incurable diseases, they are demon oriented. They are. So there are some diseases that cannot be cured by any known medicine. So you go for deliverance. So that's healing under deliverance. Healing and deliverance go together. So then when we talk about dreams, many times God speaks to us through our dreams. You, when, when you see some things, number one, you are giving money in your dreams. That's, that tends to poverty. Mm. They have used that money to buy some things away from you. It's an exchange. Take this money. Let me take this. I minister to a lady sometimes. So she was walking beside the river. And she saw this being physically, not in the dream now. A being came out of the river wearing wedding gown. Physically. And she was staring. They were staring at one another. And the being from the river removed the veil. This sister saw the face as her own. Exactly as her own. And she couldn't talk because at that time it was as if she had been magnetized. So that being entered back into the river. And she ran. She came for prayers. I asked her, are you married? She said no. So her marriage had been taken mm. under the sea. So we began to ask, we began to pray. The Holy Spirit told us that the demon appeared to her father in the dream and gave him money. Because while we were praying for deliverance, the demon spoke out of her. A man's voice was coming out. And the demon said, you cannot send me out. She is my wife. I paid her dowry. She, the demon was telling me, you, when you marry your wife, you pay her dowry. Can anybody come and say that your wife is no more your wife now? He said the same thing that he did. How did you pay he, her dowry? The demon didn't tell mm. me. Because he knew I would use that against him. So I left the sister. I moved to a part to pray. I was asking, please, Holy Spirit, talk to me. The Holy Spirit said, the demon appeared to her father in the dream and gave the father money. And that's how the demon paid the dowry. So I came back. I said, so, so you, you appeared to her father and you gave money. So he, the demon fled up. So who is my secretary? Who is it? I said, it's, it's not who now. Mm. I want to pay back. The demon laughed. He said, if you want to pay back, you must pay in the same currency. <laughs> You must pay the exact amount. I said, I will pay. He said, okay, pay. You will, I have a question for you. When you answer my question, I will give you your money. This sister now is a debtor to you. He said, yes. I said, okay, you have answered my question. Do you realize that Jesus paid all our debts, mm. past, present, and future? So Jesus had paid this debt. With his blood. You know, the faith just come. On the, I just cup my hand like this. See, look at the blood of Jesus. Take mm. it in Jesus' name. That's all. The demon screamed and fell down. And the lady began to vomit. And she slept in her vomit there for about 20 minutes. And when she got up, she said, Sir, I saw the man that did not allow me to have, because the lady was 39 years old. Mm. Not, you know, she was not even engaged. He said, the demon stood on her, <clears throat> trying to enter her again, but it was as if something is in her pushing the demon away. After many attempts, the demon left. That same mm. month, physical husband came for this sister. That same month. So, uh, in the dream, Receiving money in the dream. Mm. That's right. So eating in the dream is a means of demons. When you begin to eat in the dream, you suspect that demons are already around. around Having day. sex in the dream. Swimming in the river. Uh, wedding in the dream. A man sent a question to me some time ago that uh, he found himself... Let me look for it. He said he found himself uh, packing snails 
Okay. Uh, he mentioned the local, those small, small state they call it Lako, uh, that he found himself packing big, big ones of yes. the, the Lako there. What does that mean? You know, uh, <laughs> snail is the fastest animal. <laughs> <laughs> so, what they are trying to infuse into his life is that he must do everything very slowly. His mm. prosperity will come very slowly, if not totally delayed, totally hindered. So, Everything he does will be slow. after much struggling. Much struggling. There are many Christians like that. They, they, it's after they had prayed, they have gone into seven days dry fasting that it will achieve something very small. Mm. So that is, that is the meaning of, of, of church, that, of that prayer, uh, yes, of, of that, that dream. Of that dream. How can you be delivered from that kind of a, when you have that kind of a dream, how can you combat it immediately? Hmm. You look for the source. Ask the Holy Spirit. Do they worship idols that his forefathers used a snail to worship? If yes, that's one point. Then uh, you you rebuild the spirit of uh, poverty. Poverty. Spirit of poverty. Spirit of delay. And whatever he might have done, maybe he has done something. Let the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, we need the Holy Spirit in all these things mm. in order not to stay long in deliverance. Word of knowledge and discerning of spirits. Those two gifts are very, very uh, useful in deliverance. Mm. So, <clears throat> word of knowledge talks about past and present thing. You know what has happened in the past, in, the, in his life, what is happening presently. You just know it by the grace of God. And when you handle it, it will just it will work. Just work it will just work. So we need that. The Holy Spirit will just mention it. So uh, there are some deep things one may not know physically by himself. By himself. Yes. Mm. And those who did those things might have died. Mm. We, d we depend on Holy Spirit for that. For, for the revelation. Yes, for revelation. Uh, such things. So uh, there are other friends come. Uh, when, when you associate with, with friends, they... They can bring some evils into one's uh, life. And so, well, there are some people, they, 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 are, they are pursuing a very good thing. And uh, they are looking at it. Maybe tomorrow this thing will click and something will just happen. A woman can just come to them in the dream and they have sex and that thing will not be possible any longer. So having sex in the dream, that's the mm. effect. <laughs> so... Then eating, I've mentioned that. You mentioned that. Okay. Uh, like uh, collecting snail, collecting tortoise, mm. the, all, all those ones. Um, then dog. Maybe they see dog all around them. I met a sister that this dog will have sex with her. So all those ones, they are signs that uh, the person needs deliverance. Deliverance. Yeah, okay. So. Okay. I thank you so much, sir, thank Reverend you, sir. Bolu Akinyele. Thank you, sir. Uh, I have learned so much. In fact, is a master class today. Is a master class. I believe you have enjoyed yourself also, and I believe you will share this amongst your friends. You will. You must have learned so much what you've never had all your life. And I believe that this will help you, one, in helping you to deliver yourself from issues of life and also how to approach your Christianity, taking it from all levels to A levels. May the Lord bless you today. May the Lord cause his eyes to shine upon you so that we will live a better life on this terrestrial divide before the Lord calls us home. 